All right, so we're going to take a look at forms of equations on the back side of your worksheets, if you flip that over now. All right, so the first one, remember, we have the equation where it's got the number parentheses squared plus or minus a number at the end. It was this form that we had talked about in class, which is called the vertex form. Remember, when an equation is in the vertex form, you know what the vertex is. That's right, vertex form produces the vertex. And remember, it's these two numbers that tell you the coordinates of the vertex. Since the original form has a subtraction sign, though, the only way we get a plus 4 here is if it was minus a negative 4. So the x value is negative 4. If you recall, what we talked about also is the one on the inside, the parentheses, is kind of like the opposite value. But the one on the outside is not the opposite, so positive 8 is the y value of the vertex. We also talked about, remember when we had that over on the other side of the equation as a y minus 8 back when we were working with our translations a couple units ago, everything was the opposite, but now it's over because we've solved for y. And so remember the vertex is one thing. So if we have our graph that looks like this, we've got the vertex, but then we also have the line of symmetry because the parabola is symmetric. And the line of symmetry always goes through the x value of the vertex. So whatever the x value is of the vertex is going to be our line of symmetry. So x equals negative 4 is our line of symmetry. Remember, a vertical line always has an x equals equation because the x values are always the same on that line. So those are the two things that we know from the vertex form. When we have the form where it's got three terms, ax squared plus bx plus c, that is what we call the general form. The general form, remember, tells us one thing about the graph, mainly one thing about the graph, and that is the last number tells us the y-intercept. So the y-intercept value of this is 9. You might say its coordinates are 0, 9 as an ordered pair, but the y-intercept is 9. At the end of this unit, we're going to be talking about factoring. Maybe we've started that conversation, but when we're factoring, we're thinking about changing from general form back to factored form. And part of the work when we do that is thinking about what are the factors of the last number. So let's just think about what are the factors of 24? What multiplies to 24? Let's start with 1. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. These are all the factors of 24 that are positive. But recall, two negative numbers also multiply to a positive. So you could also list negative 1 times negative 24. Negative 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. Negative 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. Negative 4 times negative 6 is negative 24, or sorry, is 20, positive 24. So there's technically eight factor groups here, eight pairs. And one of the things that you're going to be looking at is which pair then adds up to the middle term. So let's just take a look at this and say, okay, wait, which pair adds up to negative 11? Which pair of these would sum up to negative 11? Hopefully you're seeing this guy right here. So negative 3 and negative 8 would multiply to positive 24 but would add to negative 11. I want you to keep that in mind when we get into the, the factoring part of this unit if we haven't quite gotten there yet. List the pairs of factors, positive and negative, negative 40. So to get a negative, remember we'd have a positive number times a negative number. So 1 times negative 40, 2 times negative 20. 3 doesn't go into 40 evenly. 4 does, though. 4 times negative 10. Okay. 5 goes in there, 8 times, so 5 times negative 8, 6 doesn't go in there evenly, 7 doesn't go in there evenly, 8 goes in there evenly, which we already have here, so we've kind of talked about all of the possible factors then, except for each one of these could be reversed, positive 1 and negative 40, but you could also talk about negative 1 and positive 40, negative 2 and positive 20 negative 4 and positive 10, negative 5 and positive 8. Each one of those would also multiply to negative 40. So just like the last problem, we actually have eight pairs of factors that would multiply to negative 40. 
And once again, we'll ask ourselves, which one of those pairs adds up to positive 3? Okay, adds up to positive 3. Don't, well, this kind of looks close, but notice 5 and negative 8 would add up to negative 3. So actually, it's this one right over here. Negative 5 and 8 would be the factors that would add up to positive 3. Transform each equation into general form. Okay, so this is when we're going to be using either a foil or rectangle diagrams. Some of you guys do like foil. Some of you guys do like rectangle diagrams. Um, you can choose what you'd like to do on the quiz. Um, I'm going to do one of each here in number 9 and number 10 just for reference. So let's say we're using foil on this one. Remember, foil stands for first, outside, inside, last. So we use that as an acronym to help us remember basically how to multiply x plus 5 times x minus 10 by using some distributive property, but there's four combinations. FOIL helps us remember what to multiply. So first off, first times first would be x squared. The outside terms would be the first and the last, so negative 10x. The inside terms would be 5 times x, so positive 5x. And the last terms would be Last times last, so 5 times negative 10 would be negative 50. Recall then we combine like terms. These two combine. Negative 10x plus 5x would be a negative 5x. So our equation in general form would be y equals x squared minus 5x minus 50. So there's our FOIL. If we use a rectangle diagram, What we're going to do is, whew, that's kind of an interesting looking rectangle, isn't it? We're going to put that 2x minus 2 on the top, and we're going to put the x plus 4 over on the side. You could have had the x plus 4 on top, and then the 2x minus 2 over on the side, if you wanted to. We're going to go with this, though. Recall what we do is very similar to FOIL. We get our four parts by multiplying, so we kind of think of it as the area of each rectangle here. x times 2x is 2x squared x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 2x times 4 is 8x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Combining our like terms, these two go together. If we added those together, we would get positive 6x. So our final equation here in general form is going to be 2x squared plus 6x because of these two being added together, minus 8. So that's our general form equation. Last problem on here, and we may get some announcements while I'm doing this, but I'm just going to continue to record. I apologize if you hear some stuff in the background here. It's about the end of the school day, and it's a late start tomorrow, so I'm sure they're going to announce it. But I'm going to get this last problem done. All right, so what we do on this one, remember, this equation right here, I'm just going to write it out a little bit longer because that x minus 4 squared really means x minus 4 times x minus 4. So we're going to break this one into parts because this one is in vertex form. We're going to move it into general form. And we're going to start off by just taking this right here and multiplying that together. So if we think about just our foil or rectangle diagram with that, we're going to have, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here, but I think you'll be able to follow along. We're going to say x minus 4 times x minus 4 gives us x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 be a positive 16. So if we combine our like terms together, just like we were talking in the last two problems, we get x squared minus 8x, four, negative 4x plus negative 4x would be a minus 8x plus 16. And then we would be done, except for we have a couple other parts of this problem that we can't forget. This 2 is being multiplied at the beginning, and this plus 7 was being added at the end. All right, so we're going to bring those back in at this point. Remember that 2 was being multiplied by this whole thing here, this x minus 4 squared. So we're going to have to use the distributive property here and bring that back in. And then we also have this plus 7 is hanging at the end here. So we're going to continue to simplify this just a little bit more. 
So we're now going to do the distributed property. Since this is all multiplied out, now I can actually do that with this equation. So that gives me 2x squared. 2 times the negative 8x is negative 16x. 2 times 16 is 32. And then don't forget, we still have this plus 7 here. So we're going to bring that in. We're almost done with the problem. We just have these like terms at the end here that we're going to combine together. So our final answer is going to be y equals 2x squared minus 16x, 32 plus 7. If we combine those, that would be positive 39 and done. Wow, I even got that in without announcements happening, which is fantastic. Sorry if that moved a little bit fast, you guys. If you need to go back and pause, rewind some of this just to make sure you've got it. Uh, I was going a little bit faster here because of the time of the day, 2.34 right now. That bell's going to ring at 2.35. So we're going to cut this off, and good luck on the quiz.